Hello friends. In this video, we will explore the capabilities of another wireless Zigbee dimmer from the Tuya Smart ecosystem. A key feature of such devices, as I have mentioned in a previous review of a similar controller, link in the description, is the group mode. In this mode, the controller manages other Zigbee devices within the same group independently of the smart home system, even when the gateway or Zigbee coordinator is turned off. The dimmer can also operate in event sending mode, but in this case, it functions similarly to Zigbee buttons, wireless switches, or remotes. More details are coming up, but first, as usual, please like this video to help others interested in smart home topics find it, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. The device type is a wireless logical dimmer. Model, ZG101Z. Interface, Zigbee 3.0. Operating Modes, Group Mode and Event Sending Mode. Power, CR2450 Battery, Included. Standby Current, Less Than 8 Microamps. Size, 5 by 2.54 cm. I would like to point out that this dimmer offers three types of button presses and only one type of rotation. It does not support rotation while the button is pressed. To switch between Group Mode and Event Mode, you need to press the button three times. The device comes in a small cardboard box labeled Smart Scene Button, which is not entirely accurate. Although it does have button functionality, it also supports rotation, so calling it a dimmer would be more appropriate. On one side of the box, you will find brief specifications, the model number, and a list of what's included. Aside from the controller, the box contains a piece of round double-sided tape and a metal stand. The stand is supposed to be attached to a surface using the tape, and the dimmer attaches to it via a magnet. There's also a pin for resetting the device and a small user manual. The controller is a cylinder with a diameter of 5 cm and a thickness of slightly more than 2.5 cm. The outer part of the case is a solid rotary knob combined with a button, meaning you can press it and rotate it left or right. On the back side, you can see the internal casing of the controller, which is inside the outer casing. The back cover is secured with a screw and covers the battery compartment. A special tab protects the battery from draining during transport. The mounting seems a bit flimsy, and the internal part has some play. Time will tell how this affects its operation. Compared to a similar functional dimmer from Mohs, link to the review in the description, this one is noticeably larger due to its design. As of the release of this video, I have three Mohs dimmers that I use as emergency lighting controllers. The Mohs version also consists of two parts, with the top part being praceable and rotatable. However, they are the same size, and one is not inside the other. Additionally, the Mohs dimmer supports rotation while the button is pressed, which, in group mode, changes the color temperature. An interesting but somewhat useless fact. The recesses for the metal stands on both dimmers match, so they are interchangeable. However, the diameter of the white stand is larger than the black dimmers. After unscrewing the screw, you can remove the back cover. In the center of the cover is a magnet for mounting on the metal stand. This model uses a CR2450 battery. Next to the reset button, there is an activity LED. The dimmer emits a sound when the knob is rotated. Now let's test its functionality and compatibility. We'll start with the native Tuya smart control system. To connect the dimmer, you'll need a gateway. Earlier, I connected a bulb to the same system. Let's enter the mode for adding new devices. Using the pin, press and hold the button on the back of the dimmer until the LED next to it starts blinking. After this, the gateway will detect the dimmer and it will appear in the list of devices. The dimmer's plugin operates in two modes. The first is event mode, which is similar to other wireless buttons, switches, and remotes. In addition to single, double, and hold presses, it supports right and left rotations. These actions appear in the if section of automations and can be used as triggers. However, note that the logic treats rotation events the same as press events. For testing, as I mentioned earlier, I connected a Zigbee bulb with both white and color modes to the same gateway. In automations, you can assign actions to any of the dimmer's five events, 
three press types and two rotations. I set the presses to toggle the bulb on and off, while the rotations adjust the warm and cool color temperatures. Since both the bulb and the dimmer are connected to the same gateway, all automations are local, but they still require the gateway to function. During testing of automations in this mode, button press events were always handled correctly, but achieving a response to rotation was not possible, even with different action settings. In this case, the dimmer functions no differently than a simple Zigbee button. You can also create scenes triggered by the dimmer's events in its plugin. In this case, I set up the scene to turn on the bulb and set it to a blue color. When manually triggered, the scene works correctly, but no response is observed during rotation. However, button events function properly. Triple pressing the dimmer switches it to group mode. The plugin interface changes accordingly. You can add other devices to the group by pressing the Add Device button. The system will display a reminder that before saving the group, you need to press the dimmer button to wake it from sleep mode. Only Zigbee lights from the same gateway are available for grouping. I added the bulb, pressed the dimmer button once, and saved the group. As you can see, I also have other lights in the system, but since they operate over Wi-Fi, they cannot be added to the Zigbee dimmer group. A single press turns the bulb on or off. A double press only turns it off. Turning the knob left or right adjusts the brightness smoothly. Perhaps even too smoothly. In this mode, control works even when the gateway is disconnected. There is no response when rotating the knob while holding down the button. With the MOES dimmer, this action changes the color temperature. Holding the button causes a cyclic change of color. When the desired color is reached, you release the button to fix the chosen shade. Turning the knob adjusts brightness. There is no direct switch to the white mode, so you need to come up with a solution, for example, by creating automation that automatically switches to white when the bulb is turned on. Finally, Let's check the general settings menu. Compatibility with Amazon Alexa and Google Home is listed here, but there's little point in this since it makes more sense to use the dimmer in group mode. There's also an option for offline status notifications, quick plug-in access from the home screen, firmware updates, and removal from the system. Let's check compatibility with the local Smart Home Management Center, Sunoff iHost. The firmware version tested was 2.2.0. The iHost Center allows for local control of various devices, not just from Sunoff. It has a built-in Zigbee coordinator based on the EFR32MG21 module. Start the pairing mode and hold the dimmers button until the red LED starts blinking. The dimmers tile appeared with an icon for a four-button logical switch. You can find a review of this switch on my channel. Other than the icon, no data is displayed. The device is not supported. In the General Information menu, you can see the model and device and manufacturer IDs based on which iHost selected the icon. Just to double check, I tried again. The dimmer is not present in the Automation menu as a trigger source, nor is it present in the Actions menu. Group mode isn't available here yet, but if it were, the dimmer might work properly in that mode. Now let's test it with Home Assistant. The system itself doesn't work with devices directly but through integrations and add-ons. The standard integration for working with Zigbee is called ZHA, and for this test, I used a USB stick with SkyConnect firmware, review link in the description. Start the pairing mode, hold the dimmer button, and a new device appears along with several objects. These include a firmware version sensor, which is present in almost all devices nowadays, though actual firmware updates are rare, 
a battery level sensor, and an identification button. However, there is no action sensor that would change status upon a button press. Despite this, there is a response to actions shown on the right column as events, single press and double press, type 0 and type 1, and holding the button, type 2. Right and left rotations also have their types, 0 and 1. This works the same in both group mode and event mode, which, as a reminder, is switched by triple pressing the button. You can use this in automations as follows. Choose the device as a trigger and select an event from the drop-down list, such as a button press. To test automation triggers, the system notification service is convenient as it displays a message when triggered. Here's how the automation looks in YAML code, which is used, for example, in packages. Now let's check it. When the dimmer button is pressed, a message with the text specified in the automation appears. The trigger is working correctly. Now, let's look at group mode. On the coordinator row to which the dimmer is connected, press the configure button. Go to the groups tab and click the create group button at the bottom of the window. Name the group, in this case, Dimmer, and specify an ID, any unique one. Then, select the devices to include in the group, in my case, the Dimmer and the Bulb I tested with Tuya Smart. Before clicking the Create Group button, don't forget to press the Dimmer button to wake it from sleep mode. If everything is done correctly, the selected devices will appear in the group. If you have multiple coordinators in the system, you can group devices connected to the same one. You can create as many groups as needed. The dimmer works with the bulb in the same way as shown in the Tuya Smart section, even when the server and coordinator are turned off. At any time, you can add or remove devices from the group. You can also delete the group itself if it is no longer needed, but to avoid accidental triggers, you should first remove all devices from it, making sure to wake them from sleep mode beforehand. The next method for adding a device to Home Assistant is through the Zigbee 2 MQTT add-on. At the time of testing, the current version was 1.40.2. The device was added to the system without the use of external converters. However, messages about unsupported attributes occasionally started appearing. I don't think it's something to worry too much about. This is likely due to the fact that the system identifies this dimmer as the Mose model I mentioned earlier, which has several differences the most noticeable being the rotation event when the button is pressed, providing another smooth adjustment alongside brightness. Color temperature adjustment. I didn't notice this significantly affecting the device's operation, though there are certain points I'll show a bit later, but they do not interfere with using the dimmer fully. The expose page. Among the useful objects is action. Unlike ZHA, where events were generated, here there is a change in the state of this sensor. Next. There is the battery level sensor and the mode of operation, this is the event mode. And this is group mode. Switching between them is done by triple clicking. How to create groups in Zigbee 2 MQTT? I'll show a little later. All of these objects appear in Home Assistant through the MQTT integration. As I mentioned, the principle here differs slightly from ZHA. It's not events, but status changes. I noticed that with each action, two statuses are sent to the action sensor one after the other. For a single press, single, and right after that, toggle. But this doesn't interfere with using it as a trigger. For all other actions, the second event isn't recognized. It simply exists. This is the reaction to a double press. Holding the button. Let me remind you, this is the event mode, which allows the dimmer to be used in regular automations. In group mode, all events are exactly the same. There's no difference. The same goes for rotations, two events are generated. It's possible that when support is added for this specific dimmer model, its peculiarities will be taken into account and the event duplication will be removed. Once again, I clarify, from the system's point of view, events like single clicks and rotations are completely equal. Using the knob for, say, smooth sound adjustment or curtain control doesn't offer any particular advantage in automations. Now, let's move on to creating groups. For testing, I connected the same bulb with both color and white light modes. We go to the Groups tab. We give the group a name and a numeric identifier. 
It is recommended to use a relatively long number to avoid accidentally overlapping with some standard device group. An empty group has been created, now we proceed to add devices to it. On the left side is a drop-down list of devices connected to this coordinator, which can be added to the group. I select the dimmer, set the endpoint to default, then press its button to wake it from sleep and immediately click the Add to Group button in the interface. I add the bulb in the same way, also with the default endpoint, but there's no need to press anything for it, as it is a router and does not go into sleep mode. There can be many bulbs in a group, and you can also use controllers for LED strips. For instance, I use them for autonomous lighting with Mohs dimmers. Some relays also respond to on AOF commands, which you can try if necessary. As for the dimmer being reviewed, group operation here is the same as demonstrated earlier. One more thing. The group created in Zigbee 2MQTT will be displayed as a separate device in the MQTT integration. From the system's point of view, this is a regular light, which can be controlled through the interface and automations. But these commands will apply to the physical lights added to the group. The properties here are standard, brightness, color temperature, color. So, this functionality will be useful not only for using the dimmer or a similar device. Compared to the most dimmer mentioned earlier, review link in the description, this model is larger due to the construction. Because of this, there is some play in the outer part of the case relative to the inner part. The knob's rotation is more distinct than on the Mohs, but it produces quite a loud sound. Functionally, it is worse, as it lacks the option to rotate the knob while pressing the button, which is used for adjusting color temperature. However, for controlling lights with a fixed temperature, turning them on and off and adjusting brightness, this will suffice. As a user of several Mohs dimmers, I find them more convenient and pleasant to use, not to mention their wider functionality. This dimmer would only be suitable in cases where a white controller is specifically needed and there is no need to adjust color temperature. Its main feature, group mode operation independent of a gateway or coordinator, is fully implemented here. That's all for now. I hope the video was helpful and interesting to you. I would appreciate your likes as they help promote it on YouTube. If you don't want to miss new reviews and tutorials, subscribe to my channel. In the description, I will leave links to stores where you can order this dimmer, as well as other reviews on this topic. Additionally, you'll find links to my Telegram channels, Facebook page, and a group for discussing smart home topics. Join us, it'll be interesting. Thank you for watching, and see you next time. Peace to all.